Happy International Women's Month. Today, we're gonna be talking about the best woman that has ever existed and that will ever exist. Today, we're gonna be talking about Gone Girl. Happy International Women's Month to Amy Duncan. Oh! Amy Duncan is from Good Luck Charlie. This is the best woman that I've ever met in my entire life and I haven't even met her. Gone girl, more like come on girl, I love you. This movie starts off with none other than Ben Affleck playing Nick Dunn, married to character Amy Dunn. And it opens up with him basically in shambles. Like Ben Affleck really is one for the people because he does exude some sort of familiarity in all of his work. Basically, it starts off with him like walking into this bar that he owns that he like wanted to make. Like he like is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bar owner. I'm just having a bad day. He's basically Nick Miller from New Girl. And then cut to none other than Amy Dunn writing in her little journal with her pink feather pen, talking about how crazy, stupid, happy that she is living her sweet girl life. I'm so crazy, stupid, happy. Then you cut to the Nick and Amy meet you. Amy. So Amy, who are you? They're fun. They're sarcastic. They're different. They're not like other couples. They have fun little quirky jokes. She's different, he's different, and that's how they find each other. Who are you? I'm the guy to save you from all this awesomeness. So as Nick is talking to his sister about their anniversary and like what they're gonna do because they just have this loveless marriage and he like hates his wife. What's the gift for five? Wood. So would you get her? There's no good gift for wood. He like gets a call from someone that's like, I think like your cat's like running around. And so Nick is like, okay, like be uh, like be right there. And he starts walking through the house. He's like, the door is open. That's really weird. He starts walking through the house. He's like, seems all like fine. And then he walks into the living room and there's a there's glass shattered and like a, like a chair flipped. And he's like, oh my gosh, wife kidnapped. Isn't that crazy? So then he calls the police and they come and they're walking through the house. And through the entire scene, these officers are suspicious. They're like, um, like what is up with this guy? They're suspicious of this guy because he's oddly like calm about his wife missing. Like he's like, yeah, I checked up here. Like everything's fine. Should I be concerned? There's a dress laid out and he, they're like, oh, is it date night? And he's like, yeah, it's our anniversary today. Like, I feel like if my partner went missing, the first, I wouldn't be so excited that it was like our anniversary today. I would be like, you know, like we were celebrating our anniversary today, you know, like celebrating two years. Like, just like a little bit more somber due to the fact that like your partner could potentially be missing. I don't know about you. If my partner was potentially missing, I'd be freaking the fuck out. Probably already in tears, already sobbing. Like the table was broken. I would be freaking the fuck out. What do you mean you're calm and collected? So like police officers are like, you're fucking shady already. Like they're, they're like, sure. The officers are like putting like post-it notes on things and she's finding like, obviously you put post-it notes for like the evidence. She's finding little splatters of blood everywhere. And the other guy that's like her coworker is like looking at Nick and is like, oh, you slipped up there. You forgot to clean up the, you forgot to clean up that blood over there, huh? Oh, that's crazy that that one splatter of blood got there. Huh? That's crazy. And Nick is like. And then it cuts to Nick Dunn being um, DNA swabbed and investigated by the police for the disappearance of his wife, Amy Dunn. And like when he gets investigated, like it is also like such apathy towards it all. He later on gets more stressed out by like people thinking that it's him. But even in the first like clips of him being like investigated or whatever, he's very much just like, oh, I gotta get investigated by the police later. Like it's, it's really annoying. And as he's getting investigated by the police, he basically knows nothing about his wife. He like has no idea about her schedule. 
about anything that she does um, and answers questions completely incorrectly. So through all of Amy's journal entries, you're also seeing the, you know, the life that they were living together and how, you know, like when they were first together, they had a very happy marriage. They knew each other like the back of their own hand. You know, they had inside jokes. They were spontaneous. They were having sex in libraries. They were like getting each other the same gifts because they knew each other so well. It was like all a lot of fun. It was the perfect relationship ever. And they, you know, they got married and they were having a blast. They were literally two peas in a pod. Cut back to the investigation. They find out about another character named Noelle. And Noelle is Amy's best friend, which according to Nick Dunn earlier on, he said that Amy had no friends and that she didn't hang out with anyone. Turns out she has a Southern little housewife best friend that is super concerned about where she has been. So one of the most iconic scenes from the movie is the press junket, the like press release for Amy Dunn's disappearance. So Amy's parents finally come down to the police station to make the statement with Nick. And there's all these cameras and journalists being like, what happened? Da, 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 da. It's a very big deal. You know, a housewife has gone missing in the middle of the day in broad daylight. Is this like, are, should we be concerned about like, you know, something coming up? It's a very big deal in suburbia. And so Nick Dunn goes up and he's like, hi, my name is Nick Dunn. I'm the husband of Amy Dunn. I'm here to bring awareness to her disappearance. She disappeared from my house two days ago. If anyone has any information on her whereabouts, please contact me immediately. And then he walks off and the parents are like, what the fuck? And then the parents go on this long spiel. She's a scholar, she's kind, she's beautiful. Please, we're putting together a search party for her. Please go to www.findamy.com. Everyone's like, that's how normal people would respond to someone going missing. So they finish it, they're like, Amy, come home. And then they like stand next to the missing poster of Amy. And this is the moment, one of the most iconic so shots of I've ever seen in my entire life. And Ben Affleck like nails it. Like I, seriously don't think there could have been a better person to play Nick Dunn. I think Ben Affleck was perfection. Like I seriously don't know how they got such the perfect person to play Nick Dunn. He goes in front of the poster and as he's standing next to it, as they're asking him for a picture in front of the missing poster, he cracks a freaking smile. Like the awkwardest side, like half smile, like half mouth smirk in the world. Like it's so cheeky, it's so like chagrin eating manner. Like it's, it's like, like I wouldn't be surprised if he like put up a peace sign. He was like, and even his sister who's watching him at this press junket is like, ooh. Even like she's weirded out. She's like, sir, everyone is slightly suspicious of Nick. Like without saying it, they're like, what is up with this guy? Like what is wrong with him? Even his own blood relative is like, what is wrong with my brother? The next part of this movie is a scavenger hunt. Amy leaves scavenger hunt notes, presumably for their anniversary. And the detective on the case says we should follow these clues to see what her last moves were and what her thought process was before she went missing. I know this one. They go on this little thing, they like find the first clue, they find the second clue. And then the third clue was like, oh, like a little brown house. Nick goes to his father's house where he finds the third clue, but then the police show up and they're like, I thought this was gonna be like the house. And he was like, no, like it's like not the brown house. Then he starts taking on initiative with a scavenger hunt by his lonesome. He's like, I wanna figure out this scavenger hunt all on my own. The thing is, is that like a lot of this stuff ends up just being Cause he's weird. Like there's like, it's not incriminating, but the fact that he does these things are just because he's a freak. So finally getting into some of the nitty gritty parts of Amy and Nick's relationship, we go back in time to kind of the downfalls of their relationship. We see that Nick has been laid off from his writing job. That's one of the common, you know, interests that they both had was that they were both writers and he's gotten laid off and he's not working. He's on the couch, he's gaming. He's literally a gamer boy. Then he gets a call that his mother has stage four breast cancer and they have to move to Missouri to help take care of her. 
and Amy says something that I dig up within this freaking movie. I dig it up. She goes, I don't mind. I just wish she asked first. And you expect me to hate her? You want to tell me that she's the villain? You're asking me to hate her during International Women's History Month? Mm -mm 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 -mm. And if you couldn't already hate this character more, Nick is revealed to have a secret lover, Emily Ratajkowski. Emily Ratajkowski is his secret lover. Emily Ratajkowski, my body, she's an author. She's also a writer. All these people are writers. And she is his lover and it's like, that's enough. That's all we needed to know. That's all we needed to know. I didn't need to know much. I just need to know that. You are cheating on her. You're cheating on your missing wife. Your, miss your wife that just disappeared. That is the that is the breadwinner of this household. She's the breadwinner of this household. Everything is under her name, the house, your bar, the cars, and you're cheating on her. And then she disappeared. And then she disappeared. What did you expect me to think? You're the worst. Even if you didn't have anything to do with her disappearance, I hate you. Because how are you going to have your wife that pays for everything and then cheat on her? How are you going to have a wife that provides all that for you and then cheat on her? And with author of My Body, Emily Ratajkowski with her of all people. So through seeing the downfalls of their marriage, we have a flashback from Amy's journal of, you know, the realities of their relationship once they're in Missouri and that she ends up confiding in him that she thinks that it's time for them to start having children. He makes it into a fight. He's like, we we won't be the type of people that have a baby to save our marriage. And she's like, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? And then she pushes him and then he pushes her and she falls into the railing of the stairs. And then she says, what scares me is not that he hurt me, but how badly he wanted to hurt me more. I was like, whoa. What do we have here according to Amy's journals and according to the police investigation that we're currently working on? We have this guy, presumably doesn't know anything about his wife. You don't know if she has friends, you don't know what she does all day, and you don't know your wife's blood type. Sure y'all are married. His wife went missing and he seemed to be very nonchalant about it. All of a sudden I feel like I'm in a Law and Order episode. Da, 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 da. He's smiling in the pictures next to his wife's missing poster. And he just seems to be tiptoeing around everything. And then we find out that he's cheating. And then throughout the journal entries, we also see that he was abusive towards his wife. I don't know if you can paint the picture, but what I'm hearing is that he fucking sucks. For Valentine's day, I thought I'd buy a gun. Amy Dunn decides that she needs to buy a gun to protect herself from her husband. She doesn't know what to do. She can't go back to her parents because if she went back to her parents, she would have to tell them the truth. Amy Dunn is scared for her life in the presence of her husband, according to everything that she writes in her journal. So we have the vigil, vigil, vigil. So the town has a vigil for Amy and they are, you know, they have their candle lit, they're hoping to gather the town so that they can still find Amy. And Nick does a speech where he's like, I love my wife so much. I want you, if anyone can help us, please give your help. If you know anything about my wife's disappearance, please come to us, help us find Amy. And for anyone that may be too scared to ask, I have nothing to do with my wife's disappearance. I have been cooperative with the police. I have not hired a lawyer. I am not guilty of anything. I love my wife so much and I just want her to come back home. And then, Amy's BFF Noel shouts. She goes, what did you do to your pregnant wife, Nick? You tell him Amy was six weeks pregnant. What did you do to your pregnant wife? Did you tell him that she was six weeks pregnant? Oh, oh my God. I thought this was a classy party. I'm gagged. What do you mean six weeks pregnant and missing? And everyone is like, yeah, they're like, oh my God, 
mob. The equivalent of like throwing tomatoes at a person. They're like, get him, mob him, get him. You made a pregnant woman's, you made her disappear and they don't even know that he's cheating on her. So whoa, 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 you're saying that Amy was pregnant. And so then he's at his house with the detective and the detective takes this opportunity to start asking Nick some questions. So Nick is like, I didn't know that she was pregnant. I don't even know who this Noel chick is. Like, I didn't even think that they were fucking friends. Like, they barely know each other. And the detective is like, um, they look like pretty good friends to me. Boom, picture evidence. They were, they were freaking in the mom's club together. Hikes, boat club, babies, eating. They were together. They were literally, they were kind of, they were kind of together. Um, <laughs> and while we're at it, let's talk about the, the scene of the crime. Let's, let's dig a little deeper while we're here. The, the scene of the crime was kind of a little bit sketchy, right? So the police detective starts going on into this, this, the, the investigation on the, the, the crime scene. She showed that it was obviously staged because that for someone to struggle, there was not a lot of things in disorder surrounding the scene. And then they did a Loomis test of, you know, the chemicals within near the blood spatter, which was in the kitchen. And they found that a lot of blood had been mopped from the kitchen. Amy lost a lot of blood in there, Nick, a lot. Oh my God. Nick was like, what the freak? Why would someone mop something up and then stage something else? And they were like, well, cleaning up and staging suggests homicide, which would be people coming from inside the house, people that know Amy. Kidnapping and messy crime scenes lead us to think of people from outside the house, like homeless people, which Nick had suggested earlier on in the film that there was a high homeless population within their town. You know, we have a pretty serious homeless problem in our neighborhood. You maybe you guys should check that out. So they're like, what the freak is the truth? And then they go, what do you and your wife fight about? What do you and your wife argue about? What pisses you off? Oh, money, lack thereof. Me and my ex, the same. And then they show him that he's in $100,000 within credit card debt. And he's like, what the frick? I did not, I, I didn't make any of those purchases. I don't even golf. I, why would I need all these golf clubs? And they reveal that Nick has also bumped up Amy's life insurance to 1.2 million. And Nick said that Amy wanted him to do that. Gagged. Messy crime scene cleaned up and then staged as a kidnapping or break-in. Credit card debt that he didn't even know about and bumped up life insurance. I don't know about you guys. I'm, I don't know about you guys. I'm just giving you the facts. I'm just giving you the facts of what we're watching here. I'm not trying to insert an opinion. I'm not trying to persuade you in any way. I'm not trying to make you tilt one side or the other. I'm not trying to do that to you. But for me, someone's a little fishy. Drum roll, please. Finally, we are now on to Amy's perspective. Amy's perspective, day one of presumably missing, the morning of her disappearance. I am so much happier now that I'm dead. Amy starts the narration, finally talking to the audience of how she makes herself disappear to frame her husband for the murder of herself. We did it, we did it, Joe. Yes, guys, Amy Dunn was behind the entire thing. She's kind of like really mother for that, like mother, mama, mummy dearest, like that's, a true serve of the century. She goes, he took my dignity, my pride, he took everything from me, and that's basically murder to me. So I'm gonna frame him for actual murder. He embarrassed me, and no one embarrasses me. No one embarrasses mommy, so you will go to jail for killing me. Yeah. She talks about how she faked her pregnancy by stealing the urine of her pregnant bestie that she befriended and told her stories about how her husband gets angry. She took out a bunch of uh, money to make it seem like they had money issues and a lot of credit card debt, which they like just didn't. She just made that happen. She waits for him to start his day so she can finally stage her disappearance on the morning of July 5th. So Amy goes into the details of how she faked her disappearance, how she 
uh, extracted the blood from her arm, how she made this crime scene to have just the right amount of mistakes to be suspicious of anyone or to look further into it. All the journal entries she wrote prior in hopes that the police would find the journal that she had within the beginning parts of her story being true. And then as things got more serious, money troubles, abuse, and you know, the need to get away becoming fake, um, she creates an elaborate story to frame Nick for being a horrible husband husband, um, someone who she was scared of, someone who she needed to escape from, who she was scared something was going to happen to her if he got mad enough at her. And she does this all in hopes that one day she will die. She will go out with a bottle of pills and throw herself in the river where they will find her body and truly and finally incriminate Nick Dunn for the murder of Amy Dunn. And hopefully he will die one day too. And as she's telling this, she finally enters one of the best portions of a monologue I've ever heard. Mind you, this entire monologue of her describing her uh, incriminating Nick and faking the crime scene is magnificent. The way that Rosamond speaks, the way that she has this monotone um, yet tight voice, it's clean, it's crisp, but it's monotone and and frigid at the same time where she's, there's just that little lack of like actual emotion that makes it scary. <laughs> Nick loved the girl that I was pretending to be. Cool girl. Men always use that, don't they? As their defining compliment. She's a cool girl. Cool girl is hot. Cool girl is gay. Cool girl is fun. Cool girl never gets angry at her man. She only smiles in a chagrin loving manner and then presents her mouth for fucking. I kinda ate that. She gives her little cunty monologue. She serves, she devours, she literally eats his whole entire body up and then spits it out and pushes it into a casserole and then bakes it and serves it to his whole entire family and says, it's your, it's your, it's your son at the end of the meal. That's how deeply she devoured this scene. It was impeccable. It was amazing. It was life changing. No life should ever be the same after witnessing this scene. I also love like kind of like the girl boss nature of this monologue because she's talking about everything that she did for him, how she, you know, provided sexual acts for him semi-regularly. She was the perfect image for him. She stooped to his level to be the girl of his dreams. But for him, she forged the man of her dreams. She made him rise to her level. She inspired, she made him get back on his ass, get back on his game. Who would have thought millions of girls would watch Gone Girl and love the so-called villain of the story because I do. Let me ask the audience. So things back by Nick Dunn are getting a little bit more crazy. They're getting a little bit more suspicious because Nick has caught on that Amy is framing him for the murder of her. They find the shed of all the debt that she had created for them, all the stuff that she had bought as the ending anniversary gift. And she, you know, sent him a note that was like, you know, gotcha. So Nick decides to lawyer up. You better lawyer up, asshole, because I'm not coming back for 3%. I'm coming back for everything. So he decides to get his lawyer, Tyler Perry. Well, right now it's a he said, she said. And all the clues that she left on her anniversary scavenger hunt actually have clues to incriminate him for not only his infidelity, but also the murder of Amy. And all while this is going on, Amy is making some acquaintances at the place that she is staying at. So the friends that she's making, they basically like heard her story because she said that like her ex-husband cheated on her and she ran away because he was abusive towards her. And they basically were like, I don't really think that's true. And they basically like ambush her apartment and like, take her money and screw up her whole plan. Cause her whole plan was to live off of that money and then eventually kill herself in order to finally incriminate Nick Dunn for the murder of her. So she's like, fuck, what am I gonna do? They took my fucking money. And Nick is on his press tour trying to 
uh, put his name in a better light within the public because if this goes to court, um, he's gonna need a jury to believe him. So Emmy's new plan has to do with her ex-boyfriend. This ex-boyfriend was mentioned on earlier in the film for someone that had been sending letters to Amy. Amy uses this as her backup plan. She calls up her ex-boo thing. She's like, hey, I need your help. I ran away from home. He forced me to leave. He said that he'd find me and kill me if I didn't do what he wanted. I lost the baby and they meet up and he's like, oh my God, Amy, like you need to tell the police. And she's like, no, they, oh, I can't tell them. Like if I go to them, everyone will hate me. Everyone will well, like no one's gonna believe me that this happened. Everyone thinks I've gone missing. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I'm gonna say you want my my lake house so you can stay and be safe, Buki. This is also Neil Patrick Harris. You saved him. And then as Amy's running off with her ex boo thing, and then Nick is getting ready for his press interview on clearing his name, a press release happens from none other than. Emily Ratajkowski, she, st she comes to the stand and she says, I was involved with a married man and I apologize for everything that I've done to hurt everyone in this situation. The parents caught her and they said, we believe that Nick Dunn has something to do with the disappearance of our amazing Amy. We hate him. He's lied to us again and again and he cheated on his pregnant wife. And he's the reason why she's gone. And like everyone is gagged, everyone is gasping, everyone is like literally like they need a second, everyone's pausing because what do you mean? Now the public knows of his infidelity, which is a perfect reason to kill your own wife, isn't it? Isn't it, Nick? So Nick does his interview and we'll get to that in a second, but Amy is with her ex Boo and Neil Patrick Harris. He's weird as well. The thing is, is that like all the men that she frames are like, also already weird. Like they're not like good guys. Granted, they didn't do the crime, but like they're also kind of freaks at the end of the day. So with Nick's press release and everyone on his side suddenly and Amy living with her ex Bukini Patrick Harris, everything seems to be going better for Nick. Nick's sister's like, it actually fucking worked. The press interview, people are actually defending you. But then, oh, 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 something that happened earlier on that I didn't mention, Amy puts in a hit note. She calls the line and says, there's some strange activity outside of Margot Dunn's house in the back shed. And so they come up, they say, we have a search warrant for this property, Nick Dunn. We're searching this motherfucker. And so they search the shed and they find the shed that has all of the debt that Amy took out in Nick's name. I'm talking the golf clubs, a TV, a robot dog. And they're like, mm-hmm. So you're hiding, you're hiding stuff from us. You just keep lying to us, Nick. And so now they're like, I think you're fucking guilty. I think you're fucking guilty. And so they bring, over the evidence to the fucking police station and they find, what do they find? The murder weapon to a doll. There was a doll earlier on and I'm not gonna like get into the details. Of the there was a doll earlier on. They're like, bitch, you're a fucking murderer. And they start reading him the journal entries from Amy Dunn that they had, they had earlier on that they didn't tell him about. And they start reading it off to him that the last note was that she was fearful for her life that her husband may kill her. Nick Dunn, you are under the arrest for the murder of Amy Dunn. It's now 26 days after the appearance of Amy Dunn and Amy Dunn is living up the perfect housewife life for another man, Neil Patrick Harris. And this is where Amy starts her new framing technique. She's going to frame her ex bookie Neil Patrick Harris for a new crime. And while he was at work, while he was doing stuff, she had it forcefully inserted something into her body. So if she had been tested, it would be consistent with wounds of a sexual assault. And then he comes home and he's like, hey, and she's like, I want you bad. Like, I want you bad. And then they proceed to have intercourse. And as they're having intercourse, she waits till he completes himself and slits his throat as he does. So there is evidence within her and it looks like an act of defense. And then she comes up to her house, her house back in Missouri. She stumbles up in a bloody gown, soaked in blood, crying, heaving, walking up to her house. She has returned home. She is making sure that Nick Dunn is not going to jail for the murder of Amy Dunn. So Amy Dunn comes back and says that she was kidnapped by her ex-lover and taken, held hostage, and she was beaten and sexually assaulted before she could 
kill him and make a way out. Nick Dunn is not responsible for the murder of Amy Dunn. She was kidnapped by an ex-lover. And Nick Dunn is like, this bitch is framing another person. He, she comes back and he's like, you fucking bitch. And she goes, checkmate, motherfucker. Not only did I frame you for the murder of me, I'm also clearing your name with a bob. New Bob, who this? You know when a girl starts to have a bob, you know she's about to do something fucking crazy. Watch out for girls that just got a bob because they're about to frame you for their murder. So in the most magnificent ending, Amy Dunn survives. Amy Dunn survives being kidnapped. She was kidnapped, guys. This crazy ex guy came and kidnapped her and she survives. And Nick is like, bitch. I want to leave you. I want to leave you. I don't want to be with you. And she's like, no way. No fucking way. I did all this to get back to you. When I saw you on TV telling me that you loved me and you needed me back home, that's the Nick I marry. That's the Nick I wanted. She doesn't want much from him. She just wants him to be the guy that she married. And she'll continue to be the cunt that he married. That is such a good line. He goes, God, you're such a cunt. And she goes, I'm the cunt that you married. Like, I don't like using like explicit words like that because like, I get it. Like, I don't know why it doesn't like flow off of my like American lingo as well because like it's more of like a European thing. But that, I'm the cunt that you married. Yeah, that's something serious. It's something serious. It's something that we should all take notes of. If your husband ever cheats on you, then you should frame him for the murder of you and then come back saying it, that it was your other crazy ex-boyfriend that kidnapped you and then make the husband do whatever you want because you now have control because he knows how crazy you are and that you will find a way to frame him for something else if he decides to act out of line and you guys are also having a baby together. Congratulations, congratulations, you're having a baby together. This has gotta be the, one of the best movies I've ever seen. This has gotta be one of the most um, lively movies I've ever seen. It's just so empowering. If you don't watch Girl on Girl and you don't feel empowered to leave whatever shitbag husband you have, then I don't know what it is made for. I think that a lot of the times people like to look at Gone Girl as like, you guys know that like Amy Dunn was the villain, right? Oh my God, boring, boring, sloppy, lazy. If you just say that in response to anything that I talk about with Gone Girl, then you can go get out of here. You can get out of here because you're missing the whole fun best part of the movie. There's a big grand part of the movie that is so fascinating about a woman who was trapped in a loveless marriage who decides to have the audacity to cheat on her after she sacrificed so much for him. She's literally pays for the house, the house, cars, and everything is in her name. She moved to freaking Missouri, Missouri. She moved to Missouri from New York City, concrete jungle for him and he decides to cheat on her. If you have the audacity to do that, I will frame you for something much worse than murder, bitch. I will, I will have you in prison for life, motherfucker. She wanted him to die on death row. That's what she wanted to happen to him. Can we blame her? I don't know. I think Amy Dunn is the cunt that you married, America. I think she is the cunt that we all married. And I think if you're the cunt that someone married, stand up. Stand up all the cunts that marry. Stand up to all the married cunts. Cause I applaud you. Um, I love Amy Dunn and I think this is the best movie that's ever created. Um, I love David Fincher and not in a way like other people do cause I'm different and I'm better and I'm special. I'm a special David Fincher fan. Let me hear it for all the hot David Fincher fans out there. I wanna hear you scream. There's a certain side of David Fincher fans that are just not the same as us. By that I mean, they're not hot girls. Uh, let me hear all the hot girl Dave Fincher stands back. Stand up. Gone girl, more like come on girl. Let's go party. Bye guys.